why Monty Booker is the most unique producer. So Monty Booker has been on record as one of my favorite producers. I even went to like the first Selection Festival to see him live. Bro's hard. I rock with him heavy. He's inspired like a lot of my percussion elements that are in my beats till this day. So let's find out what Loner has to say about it. I am Barack Obama. I am Barack Obama. Monty Booker has the most unique sound out of any producer in the industry right now. But what are the secrets behind his production? First, let's take a listen to Mona Lisa. The song starts off with some smooth R&B chords that are played on a soft synth pad. This is a go-to formula for Monty that works every time. A trick to make these R&B chords is to first use seventh chords and second use the fifth chord in the scale but shift the second note up a semitone. It's going to give you that R&B feel every time. As the song progresses, the chords stay the same but the sounds change drastically. It's like Monty played the chords individually with a different sound each time and then pieced them together to create something new. So I did something similar. First we have this sine key sound with pitch shift and delay. Then I chose a harsher sound with more high end. I automated some distortion on it to make it sound like another Monty produced song, Wild Irish Roses. It ain't no bad words on this side, another technique Monty used on Mona Lisa is to add rhythm to the chords. I never thought of that. I, I kind of want to try that out now. You come up with a chord progression and then use a different sound for each chord in said progression? That could make something fire. Or what if not even switching the entire sound, but like, let's say you're using a synth or let's say you're using like Lounge Lizard or something. What if you just used a different preset within Lounge Lizard for each chord? That could be kind of fire. So to do this, I added a shaper box and portal to a basic sign pluck, leaving us with this. Like I said earlier, it sounds like he pieced all the sounds together. So after some chopping and moving around, we got this. To finish off the melodic side, I added a vocal chop, something Monty is always adding to his beats. Now we need to look at how Monty does his insanely unique drum bounces. First is sound selection. On his more soulful beats, like Mona Lisa, he likes to use hand claps. Mm -hmm. Notice how the second and fourth claps are hitting slightly earlier. This is one of the keys to Monty's bounce. It's far enough off grid so it's noticeable, but it's not so far off grid that it sounds bad. After that, we have the hi-hats, again using a similar technique. Can't have your drums on the grid, bro. You can't have your drums on the grid. Then we have some perks. The perks are everything. Second to last, we have the kick. And finally, we have a synth bass. I mean, this beat is fire, but it's not given... It's not given Whilst Monty. Whilst R&B and soul is what Monty is known for, he also puts his own spin on trap beats. Take a listen to Rice and Gravy. I rock our forces, don't force it. Not for Arguably, like, the best Monty Booker track, bro. Shit's fire. Not the best, but one of my favorites. The melody is a detuned synth playing arpeggiated chords. To make something similar, I found a sign pluck and processed it with a compressor, cassette, portal, and EQ. Grids are for kids, straight up. I then added an That's ambient fire. delay to it with the mix fully wet and half-timed it, just adding some more subtle texture in the background. After that, I wanted to add more textures. He loves to use weird laser type sounds, something like this. Mm -hmm. You gotta throw On a laser gravy, in there. There are these random three note melodies that accent the chords, as well as these melodic perk rolls that add a completely different texture. Finally, on Rice and Gravy, there are these ambient chopped vocals. So I grabbed a loop for my upcoming kit and it sounds like this. Oh my guy's plugging his kit, huh? Fire. Next, we have Monty's trap style drums. Like I said earlier, he uses really unique sounds like the snare on this Jid song. 
to make something unique for RB, I later. Yo, first off, I want to give my guy Loner his credits. This is video, it's genius, very well put together, love the graphics, and I love the subtle plugs to his own sounds. Then for the hi-hats, he likes to use more traditional trap sounds as well as using the techniques we talked about earlier. Look how far I shifted these off grid and I also added a delay. After that, we have the a, kick, which makes the hi-hat bounce. I haven't put a delay on hi-hats in a minute, bro. Start to make more sense. You've probably noticed that there's no snare hitting at the end. That's inspired by 90 Proof featuring J. Cole. Monty perfectly combined acoustic and trap drums on this song. He used a drum fill to finish the end of the loop, so I did something similar. Last, but definitely not least, we have the 808s. I started off by adding this 808 definitely inspired by least, Rice and Gravy, though. hitting on the one. Then I mixed in another 808 with a bit more attack, inspired by 90 Proof. Monty Booker's sound is one of a kind. He puts soul and feeling mm -hmm. above all else as his chords invoke emotions, not only with the melody, but with the rhythm as well. Also, he just tries stuff. Using detuned textures and weird bounces give his beats real character. At the end of the day, nothing in this world is perfect. So why should your beats be? Dope beat, but like you can't, there's no replication of Monty Booker, bro. You just can't do it. You just can't do it. He's goaded, bro. And like he said at the end, which I fully agree with, he just tries stuff. That's really the key. Like he's just trying stuff. He's just being creative and just doing whatever he feels like. Sounds fire, bro. I am Barack Obama. I am Barack Obama.